Thank you for joining us for this uh, reflection time on Good Friday. I'm Pastor James Parks, and I have David Ost with me, one of our college students, home right now. And so I invited him to join me as we reflect on uh, those last moments of Jesus' life. And so we're going to take some time to do that, and I hope that you have just kind of a quiet place uh, to allow God to speak to you as we reflect and, and remember those last times. Uh, one of the things in our Easter bags we gave out was a candle uh, for folks to light during kind of some moments uh, of centering and focus. And the candle re represents uh, the life of Christ, of Jesus. And so we want to light that candle and remember that Jesus is present with us uh, in this time. And if you have one, you can light your candle there at home. If you don't, pause right now and you can go and get a candle and, and have it if you have one in the house. But it just reminds us of the life of Jesus. And as we look at the last day of Jesus' life, it's a day that we call Good Friday, even though uh, there's a lot of things that were not good that were happening in that time. And if you want to read the details of it, you can look at Matthew 26. Uh, that's where everything begins uh, for Jesus on his last day. He was just betrayed by Judas, either late Thursday night or very early on Friday morning. Uh, but I want to pick up in Matthew 27, uh, when early Friday morning Jesus is put on trial. Uh, he's brought before Pilate, who was the governor uh, of the Roman Empire there in that area. And he was the one to oversee the situation and decide what to do with Jesus after the religious leaders brought him in. And Pilate seemed to want to allow Jesus to go. He didn't want to condemn him to death. And at one point he even says, how about this other guy named Barabbas, who was a criminal uh, that he thought people wouldn't want Barabbas released. So he's tried to set Jesus up to be set free. But the crowd, uh, led by the religious leaders, shouted, free Barabbas. Free Barabbas. And he says, what should I do with Jesus? I like, crucify him. Crucify him. And so Pilate decides to give the crowd what they wanted. And he said, we'll, we'll have him crucified. And first he's sent off to be flogged, which is to be bitten, uh, beaten, uh, sorry, and, and whipped. And so he was surrounded by a company of soldiers who began to strike him on the head and the face over and over. Uh, they put together some uh, thorny uh, branches and made it into a crown of thorns, put it on him. Uh, they stripped him of his clothes and put on a scarlet robe, and they mocked him, calling him the king of the Jews. So pretending like he was royalty or uh, some high person, and yet treating him like a common criminal. And after that, uh, they took the robe off of him, and they put his clothes back on him, and they began to lead him out to where he would be crucified. And at first they put Jesus' cross on him, he had to carry it himself, but that was too much for him to bear. And so they pulled in a, a guy from the crowd, Simon from Cyrene, and they put it on his shoulders and he carried the cross the rest of the way. And as I reflect back and think about all this punishment and pain that Jesus went through, uh, I started to think about, at least for myself, why is he letting this happen? I mean, this is the son of God. That's who we believe he was. Uh, God should be protecting him, watching over him, caring for him. Why is he just letting this happen to himself? Uh, but it was pointed out to me in a book called The Rabbi on the Mount uh, that there might be some purpose behind what Jesus was doing. And we actually might find it in the Sermon on the Mount uh, that we've been looking at from Matthew 5, 6, and 7. And so I went back there and I just want to read to you uh, a little piece from Matthew 5, uh, starting at verse 38. And this is Jesus speaking. He said, You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If someone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if someone wants to sue you and take your tunic, let them have your cloak as well. If someone forces you to go one mile, go with him two miles. And th this is just Jesus telling us to, to turn the other cheek, to give over all of our clothes if someone wants it, and to go the extra mile with other people. And as I was reading in Matthew 27, I began to notice what Jesus was doing. Uh, as he was beaten, he was struck, I said, on the head again and again. He, his cheeks were beaten over and over. He just turned the other cheek and, and allowed himself to take that beating. And then it said they stripped him. Actually, twice they stripped him because they stripped him once uh, as they mocked him. And then later they do before they crucified him. And he said, if someone wants your tunic, give them your cloak as well. Those were the two main garments uh, that people in Jesus' time wore. He said, just take them both. Uh, and, and that's what he did uh, in this time. And then we see Simon. Uh, someone that was in the crowd forced to carry the cross of Jesus. Someone was forced to carry something one mile. And that was a common thing in Jesus' time, was that soldiers could force someone to carry their heavy equipment for one mile, but not for two miles. But Jesus says, if they give it to you for one, take it that extra mile, take it two. 
And here we have someone being forced to carry something by a Roman soldier. And so Jesus, in this end time of his life, is, is showing what he taught to us in the Sermon on the Mount. And he was told us to do these things, and now he is doing it. He's showing us the way to be a follower of Christ, to, to move in mercy, grace, and love as he did. And it's just amazing that he would tie those things together. Uh, but then that leads us up to the cross, which is a place that we really want to take time to reflect on, on Good Friday about what does it really mean to be at the cross, and, and what does it mean that Jesus was nailed to the cross? And I asked David to think about that and, and to share some of his thoughts. Yeah, I think um, a perfect uh, verse uh, to represent what happened to Jesus on Good Friday is Colossians 14. And I'll read from it. Um, if you have your Bible, you can take it out. Uh, or maybe you get the Bible app or something like that, whatever you have. It says, Having canceled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. I think this is such a beautiful verse. Uh, it gives such a beautiful picture of what Christ did on the cross uh, for our sins. It says right at the end of it, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And now when I think of it now, I think of like woodworking, uh, making a table. You told me you made this table. Put it together. Uh, put it together. Um, making a house, making a birdhouse, whatever it is, using nails. But what I want to focus on today uh, is what are we building our life upon? What are we nailing our life upon. I was reading Judges not too long ago, and when you read through Judges, it's almost impossible to miss that these people, uh, the, Isra the Israelites, who are God's chosen people, are ignoring God. Uh, they don't do what He says. Uh, they're doing their own thing. They're building their life not upon Him, but upon the things of this world. And we do the same things, believe it or not. Um, we are constantly building something that we think will bring us happiness in our life. But honestly, we, we have no clue what would actually bring us happiness. Because if we did, if we knew what would br bring us joy and happiness in the world, why is it that we are still so broken? Um, so I think really our sins uh, often point uh, to what we try to find our joy in. Uh, maybe it's alcohol. Maybe you like to drink, uh, get a get a buzz or, or a drunken feeling going, and just to numb out the, the the stresses of this world. Maybe you don't believe what God that God will provide for you, and that you need to have financial success to actually feel security in your finances and security in your life. Yet that never, that never seems to be enough for people. Maybe it's pornography, so you can feel a moment of satisfaction only for a few moments later for that satisfaction to be gone. Or maybe you just lie because you don't want people to know the truth about your life. So in these nails, some of these, these could be the nails that you hammer into your life because you think it's going to give you some source of, of joy in your life, but it really never ever does. Perhaps it's not in your life that's bringing hardships and stuff like that. Maybe it's just the daily struggle of life, the, the things that just come out of what seems like nothing. Maybe you or somebody you know has cancer and, and the chemo treatments are taking a toll on you or somebody else and it's just it's breaking your heart. Maybe, maybe you just got laid off. And now you're, you're questioning how you're going to make ends meet, how, how you're going to provide for your family, for your, for your kids. Maybe you're, you're feeling lonely in this season, of this COVID-19 season, and we're in this season, and the governors of the United States, the CDCs, are all ta telling us to stay inside uh, to the best of your ability. And Easter's coming up, and and you're feeling lonely, you might not be able to see your kids, your grandkids, stuff like that, so it's just really taking a toll on you. Maybe you have anxiety, maybe it's depression, and you're feeling so empty yet so full of emotion. And these nails are the ones that are having a hard time keeping the structure that we have built sturdy. And maybe it's falling apart, so you start rushing around, you hurry up and you try to hammer in sins and you try to hammer in nails of sins such as pornography, lust, alcoholism, drugs, anything really just to cope with the chaos that's happening around us. And in the meantime, hurting you and, 
and those you love. And while all of this is happening, there's a man named Jesus reaching out, pleading with you to come to him, to come to the cross, nailing your sins, your sorrows, your burdens, and afflictions. He says to me, Come to me, all who are burdened and weary, and I will give you rest. He died for your sins. He died for the chaos that's happening in your life. And now I know it can be hard to hammer in your nails of sin and suffering. And, and it, you're standing at the feet of the cross. You're looking up, not really knowing, not really knowing this place of surrender that you're feeling. You're not even knowing how you're going to give up your insecurities to God. But I want us to remember what Black Friday is all about. Hear me out. Jesus hung on that cross with nails in his hands and his feet. And he looked out beyond the crowd and he peered into the future and he saw you and me and you. And at that cross that day when Jesus died, separation between God and man was nailed to that cross and it was crucified. That day at Calvary, sin, guilt, and, sep and separation and condemnation was nailed to that cross in exchange for grace, mercy, forgiveness, and salvation. And redemption was finally complete when Jesus says, It is finished. A question for all of us is, is how are we to build our life upon Christ and experience true joy if we just don't nail our sins and our sorrows and our pain and everything that we're experiencing upon that cross? So what is it in our lives that we need to nail to the cross today to experience newness in life with Christ? Thank you. It's a great reminder for us to, to take time to reflect and really think about what are those things we've been using to build, especially in this current situation. Some of those buildings are falling apart um, because of this virus, and yet Christ wants to be there for us in the midst of that. And so we do want to encourage you just to think about what have you been using to build and, and how can you shift that uh, to use what Christ gives us to build on his life, death, uh, and, and then resurrection. And if you got one of our Easter bags, um, in that was two nails and uh, some red string. And if you didn't get one, just feel free to find two nails around the house and some string. And I invite you to, to take those and um, as you reflect on what might you be using to build your life upon and how might you shift that so that Christ can build in you. And to take those nails, and I won't do the whole thing, but just kind of wrap them with that string uh, in order to make it into a cross. And then it can be a symbol uh, of the things that you thought about as you reflected on um, the nails and, and the cross of Christ. Uh, to allow that to be something you can look at um, a week, a month down the road, and remember, I'm building on Christ, and, and I've received that forgiveness and grace uh, because he took it all and he nailed it away. I don't have to hold on to it anymore. Christ is now building uh, something new in me uh, because of this. And so uh, keep that to remember that. And again, on Good Friday, we remember and, that Jesus was there nailed to the cross, and uh, he hung on that cross in agony until about three in the afternoon, and that's when he yelled, it is finished. And Matthew says, then he just breathed his last. And Jesus there died. And so you can blow out your candle and remember that his life is, is gone at this moment. And, and that's where we need to stay on, on this Friday. That Jesus has died. His body then was taken down. It was put into a borrowed grave. And we just need to sit and remember the pain and the suffering he went through, all that he endured to nail to the cross the sins of our lives, uh, the things we misuse to build our lives upon, and, and to know that he has taken it if we would give it to him. If we allow him to receive those, uh, he'll take it to the cross with him, and then it's buried in the grave there as well. And then we hope that on Sunday you will join us for our Easter service as we then remember what's next, because the story doesn't end there, and, and that is the good news of Good Friday is that's not the very end, but it's a place to stop and reflect and, and to remember the nails, uh, remember the beating that Jesus took, and that it was all to show us uh, how to be his followers, to, to give up the things of this world and to hold tightly to his love, his grace, and mercy that be given to us uh, so that they can lead us to Easter Sunday. Uh, so I pray that you take some time just to reflect and, and remember those nails. 
lift it up to God, allow him to take them and, and nail it to the cross uh, so that you might be set free uh, to live as, as Christ has called you to live. So take time tonight to have that reflection, that time of prayer, and, and may God bless you as you remember the things that he has taken and nailed to the cross.